Well, in the rich history of Australia's military conflicts, there is no higher honour for a serviceman or woman than a Victoria Cross. Only 98 Australians have won the award for valour in the face of the enemy. But a military tribunal is considering whether to award posthumous VCs to 13 Australians, including the legendary Gallipoli stretcher bearer John Simpson Kirkpatrick. Mike Sexton reports. <laughs> He spent 24 days in, in Gallipoli, uh, basically uh, caring for people, uh, not caring about his own uh, uh, health or uh, well-being, and uh, just doing what he could to relieve the suffering of others. It's almost 100 years since John Simpson Kirkpatrick served at Gallipoli, but his courage shown while carrying the wounded to safety continues to inspire others. They said he had a charmed life. Well, he knew he was going to stop a bullet and he got one through the heart. He'd lost a couple of donkeys before that and a couple of patients had collected bullets, but uh, they were pretty brave men. Robert Hannaford's new sculpture, which was recently unveiled in Adelaide, uses the heroic image of Simpson and his donkey to honour all those who've served in the Defence Force Health Services. It, uh, uh, celebrates uh, the, the past uh, people that have served and particularly honours those that have uh, given the ultimate sacrifice in their service. Simpson's place in history is not questioned, but what is being examined is whether he deserves to be awarded a Victoria Cross, the highest military honour. He's a peacetime uh, hero. One of the things that happens in wartime is that uh, the VC winners, uh, Bert Jacker most notably on Gallipoli, are the heroes. Uh, but after the war's over, the, there's a feeling of being a bit uncomfortable with people like, like Jacker. And so you look around for a life saver rather than a life taker. It's a conundrum being addressed by this tribunal, made up mostly of retired officers and historians who've held public hearings across the country. It's a complex, demanding and very emotional uh, event. The fact of life is we're talking about records going back in one case to 1915. We're talking about uh, a lot of the people involved who have now left us. And we're talking about the whole issue of retrospectivity. Should we be doing this at all? So the tribunal has some serious questions to deal with. The tribunal is an independent body that was asked by the government to investigate Simpson and 12 other war heroes to see if they deserve retrospective awards. Among them is Lieutenant Commander Robert Rankin, who as captain of the HMAS Yarra made the decision to protect other ships by fronting an oncoming Japanese convoy in May of 1942. The Rankin family believes his courage and sacrifice should make him the first Australian naval officer to receive a VC. The, the actions that he did do, and he remained, he, he gave the order of abandoned ship, uh, and everybody did what he didn't told them to do, except he and another person who I don't remember the name remained there. And uh, to me, it was just uh, they committed suicide. With respect to the Navy, and the Australian Navy was very much in the hands of the Admiralty throughout World War II. Military historian John Bradford believes Rankin and Captain Hector Waller both deserve higher honours than they received. Well, I've approached it in the, in the way where I felt there was um, uh, a manifest injustice involved. And I did believe that the, the likes of Captain Hector Waller and Lieutenant Commander Robert Rankin um, deserve something better than what they actually received. During John Bradford's at times lively appearance before the tribunal, it emerged clearly the frustration of the entire exercise. Looking back in some cases 100 years to determine if one serviceman is more deserving than another. How do we sit here and judge who was more heroic, Gunlayer Cole or, or Sheehan? Um, and how do, we, how do we then fix up all of you'd this and where do we... The, you'd have to ask the Admiralty in London about that well, one. Well, no, I'm asking you because... <laughs> I'm asking if you, you ask, because... <laughs> if you ask me, uh, th there's no difference at all, you know. There's, and so there is, uh, the, and there is but, the, the, the frustration of the system. And if we start to correct one, where do we stop? Since the tribunal was set up, it's been swamped with submissions, not just for the 13 listed cases, but for more than 50 others to receive VCs. 
In accepting the submissions, the tribunal is keenly aware that part of the prestige of the VC is that the worthiness of a winner has rarely been questioned publicly. By making retrospective awards, it runs the risk of opening up a debate that potentially tarnishes the award. There are so many, I could tell you uh, several stories of people who should have won VCs in the First or Second World Wars and didn't. And you could, you could well finish up with, with hundreds, possibly even thousands of people who deserve a VC and didn't get it. And I think it's impossible to rectify all of that now. The Tribunal's report will be handed to government later in the year. Regardless of whether or not Simpson receives a retrospective VC, his legend will continue to endure. He did countless uh, acts, that, that all of which uh, could earn him a VC, but unfortunately for him, as has happened to many people along the way, I personally uh, believe that, uh, that it would be quite appropriate for him to be awarded such a, an honour at this time. Yeah, how would you decide? Mike Sexton reporting.